Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to VMworld 2015. This is SiliconANGLE TV's live wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the event here from Moscone North. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. Uh, we've been doing a bunch of segments digging into this hyper-converged infrastructure. On the Wikibon side, we also call the, the general trend server SAN. Uh, really excited to have a, a panel uh, to, to help dig into the reality of what's happening in this space. Uh, I'll, I'll start on the left of the panel here. We've got Chris Miller, who's the principal architect uh, from Rolta Advisex, a partner of VMware's, and uh, two of the team uh, you know, working on, on, on the vSAN and solution set. Gaetan Castellain, Senior Director of Product Management with VMware, and we've also got Raj. Uh, Yavatkar, uh, fellow and chief architect of uh, VMware, I hear kind of the CTO for uh, some of the solutions putting in. Gentlemen, uh, thank you all for the first time for all of you on theCUBE. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, thanks, Stu. All right, so, so you know, what we really try to do is, you know, there's so much going. I mean, so many sessions people are learning about uh, what, what's happening, uh, you know, new announcements at the show, so we need to give a peek inside this. But before we, we dig in the products, uh, get a little bit about your roles. Chris, talk to us a little bit about Rolta AdviseX and your role there. Sure, so my name is Chris Miller with Rolta Advisics. I've been with the company now for about four years. Uh, my primary responsibilities are supporting our enterprise customers with solving problems with technology. And as a principal, um, I have a, a stake in actually enabling our team and making sure that we understand uh, the hyperconverged infrastructure platform from VMware. All right, Gaetan? All right, so I'm Gaetan Kastlein. I run the product marketing team on software-defined storage at VMware. So we take care of uh, virtual SAN, VVARs, and really the whole software-defined storage stack from a VMware standpoint. All right, and Raj? And I lead the so-called EVO SDDC program, uh, responsible for strategy, architecture, product management, and that's our attempt to show what's the easiest way to do private clouds using hyper-converged infrastructure. Yeah, quick, quick question, Raj. My understanding is that the, the team that puts together kind of the Evo packaging is a separate organization, uh, even though they work closely, of course, with vSAN. That's is that a, true? It's a separate uh, okay, can, you, can you share how, how big that group is? Uh, number of people is about 50 plus. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So, Chris, I, I'm going to start with you. You know, you know uh, what does this whole discussion of hyperconverged mean to you, mean to your clients? You know, what, what kind of brought you into that whole space? Yeah, so, so it's been a disruptive market lately. We've seen over the past five years new storage technologies emerging, uh, and we've, we've heard our customers all saying the same thing, which is that we have to reduce our costs, we have to do more with less, we have to be more efficient, more scalable. And so now that we've got this hyper-converged uh, technology that's sort of emerging in the marketplace, uh, we've seen more interest in this area of technology than we've seen in most for the past five years. So for me personally, it's, an, it's, a, it's a way for me to, to kind of get on the cutting edge of technology, understand how we can help solve problems. For customers, it's, it's solving multiple problems at once. All right, and, and just curious, uh, Rolta AdviseX, was this just an extension of what you were already doing with VMware? Did you have an existing storage practice? How, how did that yeah, fit into yeah. it? Yeah, so we actually, we grew up in, in storage consulting uh, for a number of years. The company's been around since 1975. And, um, and we've been evolving with technology as well. So for us, this was just a natural extension of our data center practice. All right, and Gaetan, uh, let, let, let's talk about, I mean, the storage is obviously a critical component of everything we've been doing at VMware. Uh, you know, it, it, you know it, it's evident at this show how many of the partners and how many of the sessions can consider the storage component of it. So help, help bring us into, uh, you know, how hyperconverged, uh, you know, fits into the discussion. Yeah, sure. so you know, for us, hyperconverged is a major trend in data center infrastructure. Right? It's really a fundamentally better building block on which to build as DDC. If you look at the way people have been doing infrastructure in the past, it's been about building uh, physical silos. Right? I have my compute silo, my network silo, my storage silo. And the SDDC layered on top of that makes that the, the physical infrastructure better, easier to consume, more dynamic. But you're still dealing with physical clutter underneath the SDDC. What HCI is about is about uh, converging all of those functions and really running that as software on x86. And by doing so, you're eliminating the physical silos. You're making the infrastructure a lot more simple, scalable, high performance, and cost effective. And we think it becomes a much better, fundamentally better building block on which to deploy the SDDC. 
All right, so, so Raj, you know, maybe you can help the, the, the Evo SDDC, one of the new announcements here. There's also the Evo SDDC manager that goes into it. Uh, you know, thing I've been looking at for many years, even before I was an analyst, is you know, we want to build things at rack scale. We want to have you know, pools of resources. We want to get out of the traditional silos that we're doing. So maybe can you explain a little bit that Evo SDDC and how, how, that, you know, how, do, how does that fit into hyperconverge and what does it deliver? So Evo SDDC is really a story about integration. Like you said, there are silos across different organizations. So what we're trying to do is that provide a way by which people can bring together a private cloud at the agility and cost and availability of the public cloud economics we can bring to the enterprises. So SDDC Manager is an integration point. It integrates all of the VMware stack, hardware stack, including firmware BIOS, with a very prescribed configuration so we can deploy private cloud in less than two hours. Yeah, so Raj, can I, can I, let's poke on that a little sure. bit. So if I look at cloud, it's, I want to spin it up fast, it wants to be easy. Operationally, it's totally different from the way I, I manage my infrastructure. Uh, and, and by the way, if I want to use less of it, it's, it's easy for me to turn it off That's and right. stop paying for. So uh, I, I've definitely seen the whole hyperconverged discussion. I've talked to customers that say, you know, hey, is, is this, is, are you like a cloud now? So you know, how, how does this co kind of compare contrast versus so, what I think of the public cloud? So I think uh, excellent question because that's the first question people ask when we are trying it out. One of the things we found out is that when you have one or more racks and you scale to capacity which is multiple racks, if you could present that as a single pool of capacity across compute storage networks, you can start carving it out into domains, workload domains, and allocate uh, capacity based on availability, performance, security. And that's exactly what we do when we go to the public cloud. So idea is to mimic that to same extent, but also keep it under the control of the IT from compliance and security perspective. And Stu, if I, if I can add something, you know, yes, we're seeing a lot of adoption of the public cloud. I think the reason for that is the simplicity, like the speed of deployment and how easy it is to consume the public cloud. The, the disadvantage of the public cloud is economics, right? It ends up being expensive, especially as you add capacity into that public cloud. I think the objective of Evo SEDC is to enable customers to deploy a private cloud almost as easily as you would yeah. consume a public cloud, but with much better economics because it's your own private infrastructure. Sure, I, I mean, there, there's some places where, you know, my on-prem stuff isn't going to compete. If I just have a resource, I want to spin it up for a couple of hours, I'm probably not going to spend the time to do it. So, right. you know, we always like to say it is forces for courses, um, but the hybrid cloud discussion has definitely been involving. Chris, what, what, what to pull you in, you know, what, what, what's this conversation you're having? Does cloud mean things to your clients today? You know, everybody, I mean, you know, I go to a room, there, there's two types of people. People that are using AWS and the people that don't realize that they're using AWS. And we're all using Microsoft, and you know, I mean, most customers are using VMware. I mean, you're dominant in, in yeah. the data center today. So, wh where, where are your customers with this discussion? Yeah, no, it's interesting. So, you can walk into a room full of ten people and ask them all to define cloud, and you'll get ten different answers. And so, in, in a lot of cases, what we see from an executive level is focus on software as a service, the ultimate agility, and where that makes sense. Um, infrastructure as a service is definitely a goal and a desire. But to echo some of the sentiments from earlier. Uh, you know, it's really good for transient workloads, things that I'm going to pull back because that's where I can get the economy. Uh, internally, there's still that big challenge, which is how do I provide this self-service IT that's agile, looks the way the public cloud does. And so this discussion is coming up more frequently. It's consumed all of my time for the past 12 months with my customers, and that's why I'm really excited about the hyper-converged infrastructure. So right. It's finally the, the solution. And, and, and uh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, you know, is this, the storage people looking for something different is, are there projects that are bringing in, you know, operationally and use case wise, you know, what, what are you seeing? Why, why are people looking at vSAN? And, and, and I'm curious what you can share about your customer's adoption of vSAN. Yeah, absolutely. So, so a couple things. Uh, we're seeing a lot of this being driven at the director level and above. And most of it's because if you break down the typical organization's IT budget, the, the biggest cost is labor, the next biggest cost is storage, and if you look at the labor component, a lot of that is storage. So when, when you look at what vSAN can bring from a scalability perspective in terms of how you actually acquire new assets, uh, there's a, and just the overall cost savings, it's being driven at that level. In some cases, we're having storage teams ask about it, folks who are more progressive. In a lot of cases, it's the VMware team bringing that knowledge to the table. But I would say most of it is coming at the executive and director level. Yeah. I would add one Please. more thing to that, is that people don't realize it, people who have traditional storage arrays, their workloads have already started migrating to storage virtualization. So it's sort of reactive to them to find out the workloads are no longer owned by them as storage policy owners. All right.
So, Gaetan, maybe we talk about you know your interactions with with, with clients. Uh, when the 1.0 product came out, um, we thought it was really interesting, but there were there were a lot of check boxes that we were hoping uh, that we'd check. 6.0, you know, check some of the you know the major gaps. Uh, you know, no offense, but we said for get it from kind of a test environment uh, to to a more production ready environment. 6.1 has a lot more features. To talk us walk us through you know. You had, a, I mean, you had a lot of customers that were running even the 1.0 product, so you know, what's that discussion been with customers and where are they uh, you know, in regards to the roadmaps? Absolutely, it's a great question. So uh, 1.0, which was actually called 5.5 for alignment with vSphere, uh, was released about a year and a half ago. And we've always had a lot of confidence in the platform, right? Excellent levels of performance IOPS. We're bringing the data close to the computer. We're leveraging SSDs, uh, uh, flash. And that allows us to really deliver tremendous amounts of performance and uh, scalability. What we were missing initially were potentially some of the data services, right? High performance snapshots, uh, uh, synchronous replication, things like that. Uh, and then we were also, I think, a little bit cautious from a VMware standpoint. It was a $1 product. We didn't want to lose any data. And so we guided customers to test in their use cases. And actually, we were only half successful so, because some customers, despite that guidance, actually started putting Oracle databases, Exchange, and so on on the platform, right? even before the second release, even before 6.0 came out. Uh, we released 6.0 uh, about six months ago. And this week, we're announcing 6.1. 6.1 is another big step right, in terms of having enterprise class availability uh, stretch clusters, uh, synchronous replication, 5 minute RPO for async replication, better management with uh, virilized operations integration, and VME support. So a lot of good new things in the 6.1 product. And then we're also pre-announcing a beta. We're announcing a beta with some very high demand features, uh, dedupe, uh, erasure coding, and software checksums, right? So uh, that's not available yet, uh, but we are introducing, we're doing the public announcement for a beta. So, uh, so, so customers will be able to test those things out uh, fairly soon. Great. Ra Raj, you want to help fill out uh, the, the rest of the announcement suite that, that was made this week? Yeah, so the Evo S2DC is a, a solution available uh, soon from our partners, and that allows you to order a complete software-defined data center as a pre-integrated, pre-imaged, pre-installed. You bring it in, cable, power, connect, and in less than two hours, you have the first VMs running. Then we're also automating the lifecycle management. So you don't have to now invest in different tools for physical infrastructure management, logical infrastructure management. All of it integrated into a single manager called Evo SDTC Manager that also automates lifecycle management. All right, so Chris, we want to come back to you. Uh, you know, the technology itself, when it comes to convergence, uh, you know, is, is the first piece. The go-to-market, you know, how do I incent the, you know, the, the partners? How do you guys make sure you add value into it? If something's, you know, completely done, wait, w am I just, you know, selling a license? Um, and the packages, I mean, it, it, it usually takes time. I, I was involved in the early converged infrastructure, uh, you know, uh, and it usually took 12 to 18 months to kind of sort these out. And I, I'm curious from your standpoint, there's vSAN, there's the vSAN ready nodes, there's the Evo family. Uh, what, what's your experience been? And, uh, you know, how, how do you rate VMware? And, they're not paying attention. Tell us the truth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, <We're> <laughs> from, from a partner perspective, you know, we, we, especially for us, where we've had established relationships with storage vendors and, and the products that are out there, you know, there's a comfort zone there. And I think that, that, that folks are nervous about, you know, taking the next leap. But, you know, what I always tell our, our sales folks and, and our pre-sales folks is, look, if you're not having the conversation, somebody else is. And you're going to lose account control if you can't bring that new technology to bear. And so we, we've adopted that well. We've, we've been pretty good about uh, you know, shifting when the market is moving in a certain direction. And I think that you know, when you have an opportunity to save your customer money and to move them into a new paradigm, you should take advantage of that. So, so we've not seen too much pushback. From just a pure VMware perspective, uh, you know, it's the simplest product out there. I check a box, I have a, a, a storage pool, and so we've worked with a numerous other platforms in the past, and they all have their strengths and, and things, but you know, from just a pure simplicity perspective, the fact that I can walk into a customer, drop a cluster on the floor, yeah. click a button, and I have storage that performs with z very little maintenance, um, that, that's been a 
very big success for us, and we've been very happy with what VMware Great. So, so which deployment methodology uh, are, are you doing today? I talked to a couple of customers earlier on camera, and they were, you know, I got vSAN, and I, you know, I, I follow the HCL, and you know, it worked, but uh, there were a couple of tweaks in the OEM flashcard versus the other one in firmware versions. I mean, we, we know the horrible compatibility list sometimes yeah. is, you know, what we have to do. No, not it's just harsh, for the <laughs> industry in general, not, yeah. not trying to pick on, you know, VMware. But getting that stack right, I mean, I spent, I spent many years in an interoperability lab, and getting that stack right and making sure it all works together, I mean, that's some of the value that the partner community and, you know, uh, VMware putting. So what is, yeah. is, are you guys doing that for them? Are you doing an Evo package, a vSAN ready, or just to, you know, spin in your own vSAN? So, so frankly, the burden's on VMware, right? So for us, we consume the HCL, and it's, it's constantly being updated. We have that information handy. So the way we approach ready nodes is we use those as a reference architecture starting point. In a lot of cases, you know, a ready node might fit a certain profile for VDI, for example, but you know, part of what we do as a partner and our value add for our customers is actually measuring workloads and determining what the, the very specific requirements are to build that design. So we'll start with a ready node, we may tweak it to get better capacity, but what we're really looking for is that sweet spot to get you what your business requirements uh, dictate at the right price. And Stu, if I, if I can jump in here, right? Uh, so we're providing customers choice. Right? They can do the vSAN ready node, which can be customized, gives them a lot of flexibility. They can do Evo Rail, which is a turnkey appliance. And now they can do Evo SDDC to build out a full SDDC. So they have those options. The, the benefit of the ready node is that it can be customized. It can really be configured to meet their specific needs. But you're right, the day zero experience is not as good as with a turnkey appliance. But we're very focused on making that experience better. We're coming with software to really automate the configuration, and that's one of the key priorities for us uh, yeah. for the future. A absolutely. There's always that balance between kind of flexibility that's and right. you know making sure it, it's rock solid. I mean, it's great right. if I can have any car that I want as long as it's black, right? <laughs> yeah. that, that works. Yeah. It comes off the production line. It's easy to. Chris, the other thing I, I wanted to, to ask, and we'll let the other guys uh, you know jump in. Um, when customers are looking at this, is it they're looking at a lot of hyperconverged solutions, or is it you know vSAN compared to kind of traditional three-tiered architecture? Um, you know, wh where is the kind of kind of the competitive environment for this today? Sure, I, I mean I think it's a little bit of both, right? In some cases, that traditional architecture has grown too unwieldy and too expensive, so they're looking to hyperconverge to solve the problem. And in other cases, they've been you know exploring the hyperconverged market, and now that VMware has you know made its entry there, they're saying, hey, if I'm going to do my due diligence, I need to investigate it. You know, but I want, I want to come back to, just for a brief moment, you know, around the HCL and the workloads. So the ready nodes, you know, the way that, that vSAN is leveraging Flash and the performance that we're seeing, I'll give you an example. We had a customer that uh, was doing a POC with vSAN, and, and during the POC where they had some of their lighter workloads running, they had a, a problem with their SAP database, and so they needed to do a restore, and the, the target that was there was the POC node for vSAN. They restored their SAP database and brought it up and running, and to their surprise, it ran much faster, lower latency, better performance than they saw in their production environment, and that right away finished the POC. So you know, even though we have these nodes and we have these workload requirements, there's a, there's a safety buffer there, and I think that you know, having been a storage admin myself, we like to just worry about capacity. We don't like to have to worry about the I/O, and uh, the fact that we have so much excess I/O, so much performance capability in the product, uh, it lets us sort of manage storage the way we want to. All right. If I may Please jump rush. in uh, the competitive environment you mentioned, yeah. right? I'm a user of vSAN, and I use a subset of vSAN ready nodes to deliver hyperconverged infrastructure solution. The biggest advantage of vSAN approach is it's integrated into the hypervisor. So you get performance scalability, but more importantly, you get automation of vCenter management. Our VMware customers love vCenter. They're used to it. And this is just integrated. You don't have to go to yet another tool and try to configure storage. Uh, it just comes out, you get the pool of storage capacity. I find it very convenient. Yeah, yeah so uh, just to add to what Raj was just saying, the whole point of hyperconverged is to make storage go away. Right? You don't want to have to manage yeah. it. Uh, VCN is completely integrated with ESS, with vCenter. You're not managing a separate product. Uh, compared to other solutions, uh, we have about 2x the performance at half the cost. Right? So you have full integration, 2x performance, half the cost. That's a pretty good equation in terms of competing with, with those other solutions. Yeah, I, we, we know there's so much cost. Uh, you know, Chris, you brought it up early, the, the operational aspects of dealing with storage. Uh, you know, we we want to make it invisible, we want to make it simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. simple's the thing, and you know, I yep. look at all this space, it's simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. Chris, Chris please. Yeah, to add to that, I think, I think what's generating the buzz specifically is VCN's half the story for hyperconverged. So, you know, one major difference between what VMware's doing and some of the competitors in, 
in the hyperconverged uh, segment, is VMware can bring not only the storage, but the networking to the picture. And when you look at EOS EDC, I like to think of it as push button efficiency. I can drop blocks on a floor, press a button, and it, the entire stack is stood up. And now I can not only hyperconverge my storage and get the operational benefits, but I can do the same with networking. networking yeah. That is very strong and, and really unique in the marketplace. Okay. Great, so, so we're running low on time. I want to give you each an opportunity. Just, uh, you know, Chris, maybe start with you. Um, you know, experiences so far at VMworld, uh, you know, maybe your, your, your key takeaways. Yeah, it's been great, you know. So, so VMware has had some initiatives to, to, to focus on you know, enterprise readiness, making sure that, that products are scalable, that, that things are all sort of unified in terms of management. And everything I've seen here has, has shown me that VMware is, is meeting that goal. Um, the, the, the products are maturing, the feature set's great, the cloud roadmap's great, I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, a anything specifically that's been on either you know, your wish list or your customer wish list that you'd want to call out from the recent announcements or any white space that, that you're hoping to see going forward? Yeah, so I, I think that the, the, the public cloud services, there have been a number of additional services that, that our customers and, and we've been asking for, uh, and when you look at the roadmap, it's, it's spot on, so I think we're good there. All right, oh, so right. Gaetan, I mean, you, you walked through a number of the announcements, uh, you know, a key thing you want people taking away looking at uh, the, the, the vSAN uh, solution set uh, this week. Right, so if I look at vSAN, I think it's really about adoption, right? We're seeing customers asking about vSAN, we're seeing a lot of momentum. Uh, it is happening and we're very excited about that momentum that we're seeing, right? The level of excitement that customers have. Uh, as Chris was mentioning, the, the role map is resonating very well, so we're feeling pretty good about, about the future for VSAM. Yeah, I think you know, people underestimate you know, how important this is to kind of the direction of what VMware, you know, not just in the storage team, but it's a critical component of what you guys are driving. Yeah. And you know, if people thought we were going to have a million customers overnight, um, they weren't listening to you or <laughs> looking at your forecast. I, I hear, yeah. you know, according to your forecast, you're doing you know, above what, you, what expectation was. We are, and we actually announced publicly that we have more than 2,000 customers, and that makes us, according to our estimates, the number one HCI vendor out there, right? So, uh, so we, take, we think we've taken a leadership position in terms of customer adoption in HCI. All right, so, so Raj, you, you get the last word. Uh, Evo West DDC, expecting it early 2016, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is, is some of the partners showing off some of the stuff already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what should we be looking for? I think uh, uh, you have seen convergent infrastructure, you have seen hyper-convergent infrastructure. I almost went to a start a few years back, but what I took away from this VM world is that VMware has introduced now enterprise class hyper-convergent infrastructure, which also lets you integrate networking, as Chris said, and once you do that, I think uh, everything is x86 hypervisor, and that's what the takeaway is. All right, well, gentlemen, thank you so much for helping us unpack some of what's going on in the hyperconverged infrastructure space. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is theCUBE. We'll be right back with lots more coverage here. Uh, SiliconANGLE TV, VMworld 2015. Thanks for watching.